I'm here with John Kyle from Foundation Stocks. We're gonna go through the entire stock lineup in this video. Gavin Gu here from ultimatereloader.com. Thanks for stopping by, John Kyle. You bet, Gavin. Always Appreciate good to hang out. Yes, sir. Always <laughs> good to spend some time. John Kyle was shooting a match. Uh, we decided to record a few videos. This is one of them. We're gonna go through all of the different stocks. Now you've seen Dominion, you've seen Genesis 2, and you've seen Centurion. Here on the channel, we're gonna talk about the entire lineup. Sure. And if you wanna know more about each stock, you're gonna to wanna to go into the dedicated video on each rifle stock where I'm gonna put the rifle together, we're gonna to shoot it, we're gonna talk about all the features. This is kind of more of that high level sure. overview. Yep. And to start it all off, these are all made out of? Micarta. So I think of Micarta as kind of a special material. It's got unique properties. Sure, sure. And it's got a very unique look as well. It does, yeah. And, and those properties make it a good platform for a rifle build. So it's been mm -hmm. used in, in quite a few different applications. It's been used in aerospace. It's been used in construction on, on incinerator towers. Uh, it's been used mm -hmm. for its dampening characteristics and electrical uh, circuitry boards. And there's all different grades. There's all different makes of micarta. So that's a pretty broad name. But for our application, the grade that we use has served our purpose extremely well. It, it takes a rifle, uh, gives it a different feel when mm -hmm. you shoot it uh, than some of the other materials on the market. Now all the other materials on the market yeah. and really translates into a, in our opinion, a more enjoyable shooting experience and one that also allows you to be more effective um, specifically at seeing what's happening downrange. Absolutely. It's interesting because it's almost like you take wood and some of wood's characteristics. Sure. Like the, uh, the isolating cap capabilities, mm -hmm. you know, it's an insulator. Sure. Uh, and then you take the consistency of metal and then you have sort of that dampening characteristics of the wood, the sure. consistency of this type of a material. CNC machined out of a solid block. Sure. Right? Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, and in that way, I like heavy rifles and being a dense material, they are inherently that. But then we've also got the ability to remove material selectively sure. and bring that down to a weight that's going to be suitable for something like hunting or what have you. Yeah, and your point there as far as the characteristics that we love out of a fine wood stock, right, mm -hmm. um, are present here. But the characteristics that make a fine wood stock or wood stock in general not conducive to precision shooting, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have. They're not present here. And you right. know, with the wood, you have something that's living or was living rather and reacts with the environment, right? Mm -hmm. So with humidity, the humidity, temperature, temperature you yeah. have growth, you have shrinkage, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're not a great choice for uh, Woodstock is not a great choice for precision shooting because you right. have those variables, those things that are changing as you're shooting. What you get with uh, my card is you get that same feel, right, or a similar feel to a quality Woodstock, mm -hmm. but the material can be taken below freezing. <laughs> it can be taken to a stable operating temp of almost 300 degrees Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not changing on you. And so you also, as an added benefit, it, you get something that looks good, right? Mm -hmm. It's a pretty stock. It uh, allows us to have those things that we love about wood in a more stable platform. Yeah, really, really good stuff. Okay, mm -hmm. so Micarta is the common denominator. Let's talk about the common features or some of these options that sure. you have from one stock to another. Sure. So you guys do both short and long action. We now, do, in certain models. Long, certain mm -hmm. models, which ones are yeah. long action capable? Yeah, so our long action capable stocks are gonna be our Genesis 2 and our Revelation stock. We don't have a Revelation stock out here, but mm -hmm. where that kind of fits is that mid-weight hunter stock. Gotcha. So you can get either the Genesis 2 in a long action, which is typically gonna be used for some of those bigger builds as you're stretching out there, it's still gonna be very heavy. The Revelation comes in at a couple pounds lighter and mm -hmm. allows you to build a mid-weight hunting stock that's still a pleasure to shoot even with Magnum calibers. Um, and, that, and that's why we offer that in the long action as well. And so the other, that point about pleasant to shoot sure. Magnum calibers is a really important one because I've shot plenty of Magnum rifles that are made to be lightweight, and sure. I'm just not into that. Sure. You can break it, you can you can get it down to something that shoots decent, but honestly, I'm either gonna choose a different cartridge or I'm gonna add, go to a higher weight platform because I want a rifle sure. at the end of the day that I can shoot confidently sure. and isn't essentially a bucking Bronco. <laughs> You know? Exactly. I think a lot of times we get into this thought process that it needs to be extremely light. We mm -hmm. have a hunting stock, we want a six, seven pound Magnum rifle. How pleasant is a six, seven pound Magnum rifle to shoot? Horrible. How well do you shoot it? Horrible. Exactly. I'm the same way. Yeah. So when you get behind something like that, on paper it's one of those things that looks really good, mm -hmm. but it's almost like buying a, buying a, in some sense, a, a race 
car in some sense for the road and getting out on the road and saying this isn't fun at all right right in a certain application it may be needed now if we're going on a sheep hunt or going somewhere where we're really packing in um that may matter but on the same token a pound or two or three if it makes a difference between you being confident in shooting that rifle yep. and you being scared of anticipating what's coming i'm going to yeah. pack the extra weight and, right? and seeing what happens after just like in a shooting match sure. what happened after after I pulled the trigger, sure. you know, did the animal fall? Which way? Did, where did I hit the animal? Sure. You know, all those considerations that you have. Point being, I'm a lot more likely to take that lightweight 6.5 PRC than I am a 300 PRC or a sure. 300 Win Mag or 300 Rum, sure. right? One of the one of the real abusive rifles. The inlets are something special here. I think that needs some special mention. You know, I've spec'd out a couple different types of inlets sure. from you. And I really appreciate the attention to the detail and the precision of the fit. When I'm tightening the action screws, I want to feel something kind of hit and then compress slightly. Sure. Not, not walk its way in where you feel something compressing and binding and, sure. and, and all that. And then also, you give enough room around the features like the bolt stop and the bolt handle, right? Where it doesn't feel, I guess, claustrophobic, right? Where things, sure. a little piece of dirt gets in there and all of a sudden it's grinding or, or whatever. And we were talking earlier about the precision of the inlets and how you run the probe across there and you're seeing what level of precision were you talking we're about? We're within the variance of a probe. You've got, you yeah. have, you've got tenths across the inlet, tenths of a thousandths yeah. across the inlet. Um, and, and obviously that's where the rubber meets the road. Like we've said before, is in your inletting area. The rest of the stock, you want a straight, you want a true, your inlets, where your action is seating mm -hmm. um, is, is critically important. And so when you're trying, when you're when you're building something that is to be put together, right? Yep. Without going to necessarily a gunsmith to bed it. Um, mm -hmm. Like we said, the vast majority of our stocks aren't bedded. Those that are, are really just for those who sleep better at night if they are bedded, right? right? Yep. Um, the inlet makes that possible. So the way that we approach our inlets is, is very careful, mm -hmm. um, very intentional. And what that means is that you can do what we just did in the video before. We bolt together a rifle, and that rifle right there is the same setup as far as bolting it together and going that the guys who compete at an extremely high level mm -hmm. uh, put their rifles together with. Yeah, yeah. It's And if you want to see the options, just go to the respective product page. They've got a drop down, and it'll show you, you know, which inlets are available. Sure. The other nice thing about this material is, if you need, do need to make a slight adjustment for your bolt stop or your bolt handle or whatever, it's very easy to machine. It's very easy to touch up. Sure. As sure. well, optimally, you find the inlet that you want, and you're just turn and burn, right? Sure. And I, I will corroborate what you're saying. Uh, I built a copy of this rifle for a customer, and during break in, one of the, you know, three shots clean, three sure, shots sure. clean, you know, in the in the twos before it's even broken sure right yep. not bedded and so as a rifle builder that's one of the attractive things about the platform as well sure bedding takes a lot of time and in a lot of labor uh, left and right that's a big deal for a lot of the shooters sure sure yep I'm a lefty my wife's a lefty my daughter's a lefty so <laughs> lefties we have you covered um, we made sure that if anything we have in right-handed we have in left-handed as yep. well yes sir no that's that's super good uh, and then bottom metals uh, we're using the Hawkins mm -hmm. Uh, M5 here. What, sure. What, what other kind of bottom metals do you guys frequently inlet for? Yeah, we inlet for a number of other, other bottom metals. Um, we, even within the M5 family, our inlets are slightly different. So hmm. typically you find in a stock manufacturing that you have an M5 inlet. Um, what we have found is that even M5s, in terms of calling it an M5 family or mm -hmm. however you want to say it, tend to have a difference in the radius geometry, um, okay. sometimes in their mag box length. Okay. Now, while it's 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 minor, we do machine our stocks for each specific one. So if you order a Hawkins inlet from us and you go to drop in an API, APA um, mm -hmm. bottom metal, though they're both M5s, um, th that's not gonna work here. You need to yeah. make sure that you're ordering the inlet uh, of whichever M5 specific Hawkins APA mm -hmm. badge or whatever the case may be that you're going to use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we talked in the last video again when we were inserting the bottom metal about how you hand fit them sure. in the mill and then if it needs another thousandth all the way around or whatever, mm -hmm. you get it so that it presses in, doesn't bind, but it's gonna not rattle. Sure, you know, yep, which... we want we want 
we want to have as little movement as possible. It's yeah. not that it's necessarily a shootability sure. um, thing, but it is you're buying a you're buying a, a very nice product, and we want the even the, the experiences mm -hmm. you're putting it together, so that when you're putting it together, you know, hey, this is built for that. It's elegant. It's elegant to slide it in and have sure. it. Sure. Just that little bit of friction. Yep. <laughs> yep. In the same way on our action inlet. So you'll mm -hmm. notice that that again, you typically have a Remington 700 inlet on a lot mm -hmm. of on a lot of manufacturers. Ours are specific to the action. Um, sometimes that is a critical um, dimension change, and sometimes it's hey, we want your ejection port, your bolt handle, your bolt stop to fit like it's supposed to, mm -hmm. so that when you drop in your action, that those ejection ports line up right. That yep. your bolt handle instead of having a extremely large cut out to where any bolt handle will work right. that is sweet with your bolt handle. Right. So some of that, um, like I mentioned, is is a critical thing and some of that is that you're buying um, a product for an, another you know, really nice premium product and we want it, it to go together like it's supposed to. Yeah, and you're not designing in the blind either. You guys get those actions in-house mm -hmm. and I'm sure you're doing a bunch of test fitting and sure. reprofiling and you've got that program for the machine Sure. Just dialed. <laughs> yeah, we do. We try to have every action we inlet for mm -hmm. on hand. Um, we fit with them uh, before they come off the machine, just to make sure everything's right. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, initially, it's a visual check, right? Make sure everything's looking looking correct. We're fitting them or as far as um, you know the, the feel on them, the critical mm -hmm. surface area contact, and making sure that to the best of our ability, when the stock goes out to the customer or the gunsmith, you do not need to touch it. Yeah, and one of the checks I always look at is, do we have even gaps on sure. either side of the barrel channel? Mm -hmm. And I've found these to line up just incredibly well. And to me, that's an important thing, especially when you're shipping a rifle to, to a customer. Sure. You know? it is. So the so-called bag hook, <laughs> this yep. guy down here, right? Sure. Uh, standard on some models. It is, Optionals yep. on others. We'll get into that when we sure, get sure. into each model. Uh, the weight, light or standard, let's talk about that a little bit. Sure, yeah, so as we mentioned before, the stocks inherently are going to be heavier stock, right? They're homogeneous material, dense, same material all the way through. We don't have a mm -hmm. fill and a shell. Mm -hmm. What you have on the outside is what you have all the way through. So yep. when we're talking about a standard versus light, on most of our models, what you're looking at is more of a balance point. So mm -hmm. in, in a positional shooting type environment, and sometimes you're even prone to it, you know, the balance of a rifle is important, right? Mm -hmm. And so what that means is the standard versus light is simply eight ounces taken out of the rear of the stock. And where that translates into practicality is if I'm running a long 26 inch or 28, I believe it's 26 inch barrel with a heavier contour, mm -hmm. then I'm gonna wanna keep that weight in the rear yeah. of the stock, right? Yeah, I sense. want that balance point to be yep. as close as I can be to just right in front of the magwell. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm running, and a lot of times this comes into play on rimfire builds, if I'm running a shorter or thinner contour barrel, yep. then I wanna have some weight out at the back of the stock yeah. because we're then shifting that balance point, right? Yep. And that's where that comes into play. So it's not a, heavy versus light scenario, it's a balanced scenario. No, that makes total mm -hmm. sense. That's good to have that option too. And then the finishes, natural is light, dark is like what you're gonna see here. Sure. Coyote. Yep. Dark the, distressed actually, yep. Yep. Oh yeah, that, that is dark distressed. Yep. Yep. Um, coyote, let's describe coyote. Yeah, so so coyote is going to be a natural finish with some some black streaks through mm -hmm. it. So uh, it, it, it was formerly called distress, but there was some, you know, when you have a dark distress, you have a distress, there's a little confusion. So we renamed it coyote, but yes, it's gonna be a lighter stock, mm -hmm. uh, almost maple color. It's gonna have some dark yep. stressing through it, but your primary, your primary color is still gonna be that natural micarta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can kind of see that fabric texture sure. on the sides yep. in, in yep. a different way with that. This is the dark distress as you it pointed is. out. Yep, because yep, it's the dark but it's also got kind of some streaks of darker sure. within that. I really Variation. like the dark distress personally. Yep, yep. <laughs> and then the premium black which we've got back here. Sure. This, I'm telling you, you got to see this to believe this. I've been looking at this rifle constantly since we put this together today. It is, it is like a black sniper rifle but with this really cool texture. The, the best thing I can think of is like, think of a McLaren with like a carbon fiber hood. It's that, the way the sun hits it, it's sure. the texture. It's just a really, really neat looking rifle finish and, and a great stock. And it's it's homogenous all the way through. The color goes all the way through. It does. So if you scratch Correct. it, it's actually not gonna show as Correct. much. Is that it right? won't, yeah, I mean easily. So what you have is you've got four finishes that are the same base material, which is mm -hmm. this material right here. So this is a little bit of a, a darker blank, a little bit redder mm -hmm. blank. Some are blonder, some are redder, it just depends. Um, that, that's just inherent in the blank. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the process for their finishes are either gonna be a dyed process, 
um, which they actually go into a vat for several hours after they're machined mm -hmm. and they take color. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be a painted process, which is what you see here. Okay. Um, and, and then from that point, they all get the same coating process after that, which is three, four day coating process of layer upon layer of, of, a, of the top coat. Um, but what that also means... Is that means, sprayed on or is that rubbed it on? It is, or? it's rubbed on. Yeah, it's okay. actually yeah, co coated on with, with brushes and then from there it's going to be um, basically fine sanded, like mm -hmm. really high grit, grit sandpaper just mm -hmm. for any kind of swirls or anything that we may have in it. Mm -hmm. and, and then it's, it goes to final check, which is actually through Amy, my wife. So she's, she's got <laughs> the, the hawk eye. She's got the hawk <laughs> eye on her for finished stuff. So if, it, if there's anything that she sees that she doesn't like, it comes back to finishing nice. and it gets taken care of before it leaves the mm -hmm. shop. Yeah, no, that's, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can get the custom engraving. We've got it on the side on this guy, on the sure. other side, and then I believe got it here. Yep. Um, this has the UR Ultimate Reloader logo and, and my last name, and that's a slight upcharge for that, but sure. uh, uh, kind of a nice, there might be so many foundation stocks at the PRS match, you might need to know which one is yours. So there's right? actually a funny story on that, and it's, um, so two of the top shooters in the game, you have Justin Watts and you have Clay Blackheader. Um, both are extremely high level shooters. Clay Blackheader won the, the PRS series in 2019. We were shooting the Hornady PRC match a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Justin's in contention to win it. And the Hornady PRC match is one of the toughest matches there is. Very natural terrain. It's held mm -hmm. on the Deseret Ranch in Utah, 250,000 acres. You drive wow. an hour in to shoot the match, right? And uh, on one of the stages, Justin grabs the rifle, gets up on the stage, Time starts, get on the rifle, looks at the reticle and realizes, this is not my rifle, <laughs> right? And so from that point, he had to make a decision, okay, well, what do, I, what do I do now? The time started, it's his fault, so there's no resetting, yeah. right? Wow. And so he, he quickly makes a decision, you know, exchanges rifles. He's got 90 seconds. Um, he ends up getting uh, six out of his 10 shots off because of the lack of time sure. and loses the, ma loses the match by a couple points oh. within that margin, right? Oh, wow. So from then on, <laughs> uh, and you'll have to know Justin to um, you know, maybe appreciate this in fullness, he took a chalk pin and he still shoots this rifle on it. It says, <laughs> not Clay's rifle, all over the rifle <laughs> to make sure that he doesn't make that mistake again. So you're correct. The engraving, the engraving will help you differentiate <laughs> on the line. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's really funny. Right on. Well, let's get into the actual stock. So I sure. think the interesting thing about Genesis, now does just try and grasp this. Genesis was sort of publicly introduced on the prize table in 2016. Correct. And it was on the podium in 2017. Correct. Yeah. That is insane. You know, it's it's been a really <laughs> neat uh, a neat thing to watch. You know, and and as we as we've talked, you know, the number one variable is going to be your shooter. Mm -hmm. You know, you get the guys behind the gun are the number one variable of 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 the whole setup, right? Mm -hmm. And we've been very fortunate to have great guys choose to run our setup. I do say choose; they choose to run our setup. We're a small company. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't, we don't, um, you know, pay shooters. We don't do any anything like that 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 would incentivize other than, hey, you're running it because you want to run it. Yeah. Right. And yes, and so it's just been a really a blessing to watch um, the market acceptance, the people acceptance. Um, the community in itself is a, mm -hmm. is a great community to be a part of. It's a community that myself, my family, my five kids mm -hmm. are, are a part of constantly. We go to tons of matches across the that. U.S. I see mm -hmm. that on social media, and I can't believe that you can find the time to do all that. Kudos for, <laughs> for that. Sure, sure. It's fun, though. We enjoy it. <laughs> and that, that's the cool thing. I mean, large companies, small companies, the, there's so much involvement in the matches and mm -hmm. in the community. That is really what we're about, I feel like. Sure. And it's... Every time I go to a match, which isn't probably frequently enough, I come away feeling so good because I'm connected with people that have common goals. Sure. You know, they've got a common passion and learning. Sure. You're yep. always going to learn at a match. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what was cool about that is you got the formula really, really close to perfection right from the get-go. And what, like, was this your shape and contour and design did you talk to a bunch of different shooters how how did this happen initially yeah originally you know a rifle stock in general is a general shape mm -hmm. right so there there's definitely some similarities across the board with the rifle stock when i looked at originally designing um the genesis it was what really what was comfortable to, to me right mm -hmm. and so as we uh, looked at looked at different stock designs we looked at the features that we wanted to have 
and specifically a PRS rifle, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the things started to come together. The wide fore end to cover your scope bell, mm -hmm. um, the back hook to allow in, in, in modified prone positions, not for your bag, but for your hand to get in there and right. kind of fold into the rifle yourself, right? Mm -hmm. The adjustability of the cheek piece, some things that are important to you. Yeah, so it's got the the standard features that you're talking about. The 2.6 inch wide fore end is mm -hmm. really nice, like you said, so that you can protect your scope bell mm -hmm. from you know, hitting your barricade and that kind of thing. Sure. You've got the modified Anschutz rail, which uh, was kind of new to me sure. on this style of a rifle. And it's just a super simple base platform. We mm -hmm. talked about that before. It allows you to use anybody's uh, accessory. You can use ours, we make them, mm -hmm. or you can use uh, pretty much anybody's accessory that has a flat bottom and holes through it. it right. All it requires T-nuts and 1032 screws from us, and that way, both with our accessories, you can change them across the stocks, whether it's a hunting stock to a competition stock. So it's just a super simple um, base system that is, that is very flexible for whatever you want to do with it. Yeah, and it's enclosed on both ends, and mm -hmm. then you have this sort of drop zone in the middle where Correct. you throw the T-nut and then you slide it in the position. Correct. So mm -hmm. if things get a little bit loose for whatever reason, they're, they're not able to slide off but sure that's yeah. not really an issue with these t-nuts that we've never had one amazing yeah we've never had anything <laughs> slipping them that that i know of i mean mm -hmm. maybe somewhere somewhere out there but we've never you know seen seen that be an issue and this one has the slightly angled grip right and this is where it we'll does. see some differentiators with mm -hmm. with models like the centurion so genesis was first then came exodus and Correct. comparing this to genesis mm -hmm. What, where, where do the features vary here? Yeah, so very similar stock. Grip four, the differences you see is that the, the grip to trigger relation is slightly closer. Mm -hmm. And that's something that was feedback from our early, from the Genesis we introduced was we feel like we're reaching a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so we came forward 300,000, so a little bit over a quarter of an inch. Uh, and that seemed to be the money spot uh, for a lot of people. So that's what we did on the Exodus. Uh, the other difference between it is that instead of having your 2.6 inch beaver tailed four end, mm -hmm. you have a two inch. Okay. So for me personally, the Exodus is my favorite stock to build a hunting build out of, okay. even though it's not specifically our hunting builds, because it drives so uh, it drives so much like my match rifle, which I put thousands and thousands of rounds yes. through a year. When I get into an Exodus, um, I drive it extremely similar, and you know, but but it doesn't feel as big in my hand in the field because that four end is right. two inches. It doesn't beaver tail out to two point six. Yeah. That's I, really the difference. I have the same philosophy in, in South Africa this summer. I was shooting a PRS style rifle with Peter Milan, mm -hmm. and I felt like I was at a PRS match. Sure, it's exactly how I want to feel. Sure, when I'm hunting because that's how I'm going to practice. Sure, and that's just that's just how I shoot. Same slightly angled uh, exactly. profile then, grip, just three hundred thousand scored. Closer. Yep. Yep. And and the other the other features uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So then Genesis two comes along. Yep. It's kind of the third sure. model. Tell us about that. So all the Genesis two is the only difference is that that grip to trigger relation is three hundred thousands closer. Mm -hmm. Everything else is the same. Now was that also the first introduction of long action in the entire lineup? The Revelation would have been the first. And the Genesis two was the second one to get long action. Um, the Centurion will likely be um, the next one to get a long nice. action inlet. Um, because we've been ha we have quite a bit of ask for those bigger calibers yeah. in the Centurion stock. Okay, so Revelation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so the Revelation was our first hunting stock. The Revelation, um, one of the main goals with it was to drop some weight. Um, mm -hmm. It comes in at four pounds, so for comparison, a Genesis or Centurion is going to be five and a half pounds. Mm -hmm. And so you drop a pound and a half off that. Um, the grip of it is the exact same as the Centurion grip. The fore end on the Revelation, quite a bit different. It's gonna narrow down to 1.3 at the front, so a mm -hmm. lot thinner. It's gonna have some cuts in it, some weight saving cuts, but when you get behind it and you're driving it, um, it's gonna feel very familiar to you if you're running a Centurion in competition. The Revelation um, creates you know, a very well-balanced mid-weight hunting rifle mm -hmm. that, again, like we talked about earlier, is still nice to shoot. <laughs> Absolutely. And then Centurion, which we have here. Mm -hmm. So Centurion, it is uh, our other main competition stock besides the Genesis 2. Mm -hmm. Main difference, grips, right? You mm -hmm. got a vertical grip, very close grip to trigger relation on Centurion, um, where you have a more traditional competition grip, still very vertical compared to a hunting stock grip, yes. but it does have some angle to it with yep. a generous palm swell. And so that's your main difference. You got some difference in your four ends as well. You got overall the widths are the same at 2.6 inches, but you have a uh, two and a half inch flat on the bottom of the Centurion, whereas on the Genesis you have a one and a half inch flat. So what that 
What that means is that the radii here coming out of it mm -hmm. are quite a bit larger on the Genesis, uh, smaller on the Centurion, so you have a blockier shape on this, but mm -hmm. it does give you an extra inch on the bottom of contact if that's what something you're looking for. So is that for guys that aren't running an Arca rail that want it to just sit flat on the bag, or does that also translate when, when you're just using a bag and the bag conforms to the Sure, yeah. yeah, I think you hit it on the head. It, it depends on the bag you're running. Mm -hmm. So personally, I run a pretty heavy sand fill bag mm -hmm. for my positional bag. So you get, um, you get some conformity around the stock, but it's not like it's going to swallow the stock, if that makes sense. Yep. And so it, it's really preference again. What bag are you running? What, what are you wanting um, contact with your stock? If you're running an arc rail on the Centurion, that's an inch and a half dovetail. So you're going to have mm -hmm. the same bottom surface area contact yep. as you on a Genesis, if that makes sense. So yeah, if you're running totally. a stiff bag, that's still going to be with contacts. Mm -hmm. Now you do see some guys running a shorter arc rail on the front. We, we sell mm -hmm. a shorter one or yep. uh, choose a different length to where when they're running their bipod, they say, hey, this is pretty much where we adjusted in competition. Mm -hmm. It's about mm -hmm. here. So from here to here, they leave that pure stock for bag contact. And it's, a, it's just amazing how such a small detail can make that rifle sit so much more steady. Sure. Whether it be your position mm -hmm. building skills, whether sure. it be the bag, the rifle, and those little things, they really can make the difference between hitting those targets really far off the barricade and, and not. So Yeah, the, the name <laughs> of the game is building a position. And, yeah. I, and I don't care if that's in, in precision rifle shooting in terms of like a PRS type of scenario or if that's in a hunting scenario. Mm -hmm. You've got to build a position to where you're stable to take a shot with, with solid placement on the animal. To where mm -hmm. when you're looking through that crosshair and you're locked in, not, not saying that you're not going to have any wobble, but we want to eliminate yeah. as much as you can. Yep. Absolutely. Steady. Steady is what you want. And then finally, uh, Dominion, which we've yep. got here, sure. the, the Shorty Project. We've done multiple videos uh, highlighting this. You guys picked whether it was going to be a 16.0001 inch barrel okay, mm or an 18 or a 20. You guys picked the 16.0001. Sure. And, and then, did you get the point zero zero? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Just making sure. I didn't want you to be <laughs> deceived. So, yeah, that's I mean, right. I'll verify later. <laughs> no SBRs here. Tell us the, the, the motivation with this stock. Yeah, so this is a different flavor than the rest of our stock. Mm -hmm. So this stock mm -hmm. is, a, is the goal here was to provide an even lighter stock than Revelation. So we shaved another pound off of it to provide a stock that was more traditional. You'll notice that the grip is quite a bit more um, oh, yeah. slope than any of our other stocks. Yep. This rifle um, is pleasant to shoot offhand. Um, as far as our only stock that doesn't have an adjustable cheek piece, mm -hmm. um, quite a bit of attention was paid to make sure that when you fire, the recoil tracks straight back, right? Yeah. That we don't get up or down with the stock. And I and my kiddos have all, all killed multiple animals with it and taken it in the field. And um, it's just been... Um, uh, again, a, a joy to shoot. It's three pounds, um, while our other ones, like I said, are you know are a lot of times half. five and a half, closer yep. to six pounds. Mm -hmm. um, but the the it's still a it's still a rifle that that tames um, even well. For instance, maybe the best best way to tell is I have a eight year old son now. He actually just shot gap grind last last weekend. That's um, awesome. The weekend before with us, and my ten year old <laughs> daughter did as well. Yeah. But we had taken them both on a hunt. We had a buddy that had a ranch and. Um, had um, too many female odd ads on it. Mm -hmm. And so he said, hey, I'd love you to come check the ranch out and the kiddos can shoot, a, can shoot an odd ad. Wow. And um, <laughs> yeah, it was a pretty neat deal. That's the gentleman's awesome. name is James Darby, Lost Bucks Ranch. <laughs> super, nice. super cool place, super cool guy. Cool. And so we took the kids out there. Ellie shot hers with a, a 6.5 Creedmoor. John Winston didn't get a chance. We're going to go back and get him one. But what he did get to do is I had a 6.5 PRC that I shot one with. And Mind you, this is a seven-year-old kid at this time, and he's only eight now. It was just last <laughs> year, and so we decided, well, let's shoot anyway. Let's have some fun, you know. Yeah. We don't, and so we put him behind the seven PRC. I'm sorry, the six-five PRC, and I give him a dope at a 760-yard target, and he takes a shot. And I realize I gave him a sister dope, a six-five Creedmoor, right? Uh -oh. So what's that mean? That means a bullet's <laughs> yeah. impacting low, right? Yeah. And so, but before I can get my it out of my mouth that, oh, I messed up. I gave you your sister's dope. You need to correct this. He goes, man, I was low. I need to adjust. He brought <laughs> it up, hit the target at 760 with a 6.5 nice. PRC in the stock. Um, I will say that my son is is very good with recoil, more so probably uh -huh. than that. For whatever reason, it doesn't bother him. He can, he yeah. actually, we were with Tom Manners at uh, the Utah match, a horny PRC, and mm -hmm. he shot his two mile gun and we were all a little bit nervous. You know, we were there like, okay, make sure your shoulders are done, make yeah. sure you're down. And it's this right. little kid laying next to a rifle that's about twice as long with him. And he shot it. 
Um, and got up just a big smile on his face, and Tom was generous enough handed handed him, or actually I think it was Robert Brantley handed him, you know, the, the brass that, mm -hmm. from the from the which you know when you're shooting guns like that, that brass is pretty uh, oh, yeah. pretty valuable. So anyway, oh, yeah. you let him keep the brass from it, but <laughs> That's cool. it was something where he just got up smiling, and and uh, <laughs> so he's he's pretty um, recoil, um, he's pretty good with recoil. But regardless, it created a tame enough system that my seven year old could spot. A impact 760 yards and know what he needed to do when dad messed up and that's, gave him the wrong dope. No, that's absolutely awesome. And you know, you mentioned it being kind of optimized for offhand shooting. That's how we're shooting it a lot. Sure. Right mm -hmm. now, it's it's set up to run our super or subsonic 308 loads. Sky sure. Miner's story on that was really awesome. We've got the Silencer Central Backcountry. This is a nice light, short, sure. hunting oriented. Yeah, I haven't suppressor. shot that. I'm looking forward to later. Yeah, we'll have yeah. to go try that. The Loophole 2 to 10, sure. Mark 5 HD. Yep. Really great setup. Really fun to shoot steel in our industrial yard. And I think would make a fine hunting rifle for that sort of closer engagement. Yep. You could, of course, build a nice long range setup sure. on a Dominion, but the, the way that we have it set up is, is just great for that. And it's a lot of fun. Yes, sir. Okay. So this has been an outstanding discussion. I'm glad we went a little bit more into detail on the background of foundation sure. and all of the different options and optimizations because you've really covered hunters as a class, right? Sure. Not ultralight, but, sure, sure. but the competition market as well with enough different you know, configurations where you're gonna be able to find what you want you know, regardless of, of what your setup preference is sure, and sure. all that. Yep. And and really good stuff. And, you know, like I said, we chose Foundation Stocks for our first lineup of rifles because they're so great to build on and they're so great to shoot. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Our question for you is, which Foundation Stock would you pick? Are you a hunter or are you a competitive shooter? Uh, which stock would you pick? Which cartridge would you be shooting? And... Which color are you going to pick? That's the big question, right? I think right? we know which one Gavin's going to pick now. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you which one. Sure. <laughs> and thanks again, John Kopp, for coming. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. You're going to want to check out those other videos and the ones that I've published previously as well. And we're going to continue bringing you fresh content as John, Kyle, and Amy release new projects, that kind of thing. So thank you very much for watching. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you wanna learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're gonna to wanna to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.